Hello everyone, this is Stefan coming to you once again from inside the dog house. It's been a bit dry lately, not gonna lie, uh, in terms of buying comic collections. There haven't been a lot available, but I bought a lot during the pandemic. I think um, what ended up happening was people who had some interest or comics laying around that they were willing to get rid of uh, just did it during the pandemic. And so there are more at that period of time. Now there's less because the ones, the people who were selling uh, have already sold. Uh, at least that's my best guess. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but uh, it's been a little while and I picked up a small collection the other day. It's a Bronze Age collection that I want to show to you as a reason for making this video. Um, the people who sold it to me were very nice, um, very, you know, social, um, pleasant to deal with. I gave them, you know, my name in case they know anyone who's selling comics down the road, uh, things of that nature. They, they were happy with it. I was happy with it. Uh, it was one of those very smooth and quick transactions where everyone got what they wanted from it. So um, the collection itself was kind of strange in a way. So, you know, we, we came up, we, we figured out a price right away, but the comics themselves, they were not in comic bags and boards. They were in kind of the types of plastic sleeves you see in three ring binders. And they were just wedged in the top with no backing boards. So right away, you know, um, it, it means that there's going to be, you know, basically mid-grade comics. I was, I was a bit surprised that the comics were actually in better shape than I thought. Uh, there were like sevens, eights, um, you know, that type of grade range in there but also a bunch of mid-grade, like expected. It, it is what it is. And the person who put together this collection was very big in the 70s on picking up key issues and issue number ones. So it's just packed with number one of everything. And most of them are valueless, but there's some that are kind of cool. So I'll go through this and, um, and talk about, you know, the comics themselves. First up is um, Spider-Man 194. First black cat, black cover, really hell on wheels, especially when it's stored this way um, to, to have it in good shape. But I was surprised, like it's sitting right now at about an eight. I can press it. Uh, there's a pop that won't come out. The black is like it's murder for things like that. But I believe I can get it to an 8.5 or a nine after a press. And it's probably the best condition or one of the best condition comics in the whole group. And if I had to pick one, to be a higher grin than the others, I would pick that one. So there's that as a starting point. Now this book, What If Number 10, um, it, it's taken a tumble after the Thor movie came and went. Um, there's, there's less interest in it, but it's still far more valuable than it was before the pandemic. It's a pretty good copy. Uh, again, looks like about an eight. So I, I did pretty well with that one. Um, and the same as this, uh, what if number one, uh, there was a run of what if early what if comics from from this series, and the two that were in the best conditions were the best condition were number one and ten, which is again very lucky for me. Um, next up is DC Superstars presents, and this one um, is the one that features the Huntress. So again, a pretty pretty nice DC key this time around. We have DC Comics Presents number one, the only one from this run. Again, this person was picking up number ones as, as they were going. Uh, so the, you know, the biggest one isn't there, but I, I, I'm okay with having a number one. That's fine. Omega the Unknown number one. I um, actually had another copy that was graded. It came back 9.6. This one isn't as strong, but still I'm okay having it. Machine Man number one. Uh, I grew up loving the Machine Man series. I collected these comics. I had them all when I was a kid and read them to death. Um, it's a wonderful series, absolutely fantastic. So happy to see a number one. This is more of a very, very mid-grade copy. There's spine stuff happening. It's Iron Fist number one. Um, and there's pops that are you know quite sizable in here. 
It's probably about a five, maybe five and a half right now. I'll press it out, but I can't do much about it. Like it's it's not going to go above a six for sure. And it probably won't make a six. Uh, we have Invaders number or Invaders Annual number one. Um, so this again, the person was collecting number ones all the way through. We have Kung Fu Fighter number one, another decent enough uh, comic to have. And the last one I'll show you is pretty cool. I always like to see this in collections. Black Lightning number one. This is a, a character in a comic that really has not hit the heights that it's going to eventually hit. Um, I don't know how long I'll keep this particular book. I've had like many copies of this through the years. And uh, this is kind of an average copy of it. It looks like about a 6, 6.5, like that type of range. So very affordable copy. But, um, but I do think that if people hang on to this particular comic, they will do well in the long run. I just don't know how long, like it, you know, it, it could be a while. So that, those are just the highlights. There were about, um, maybe 125 comics in this collection. So it, it was small. I'm, I'm used to getting collections where there's, you know, I spend X number of thousands of dollars uh, and I get like 1,500, 2,000, 3,000 comics at a time. This was not like that, but the trade-off for it was that this was key heavy. And even the books that I'm not showing are um, because they're Bronze Age comics, like the early What If comics and stuff. Even if they're not, you know, the highest end, they're still good comics to have in general. They're they're, they're nice comics. So I, I'm I'm quite pleased. Um, the only kind of well, I, I wouldn't call it a, like duds or anything. Cause they're fun, to, like a lot of fun to read. But there's a big stack of about thirty Marvel's greatest comics, which is okay. Like they're reprints of Fantastic Four issues that are hard to get, but uh, they're not going to push the value needle of the collection <laughs> like very far. So, so that is it. That is the um, the ones that I'll show. But there's you know more comics, um, slightly maybe not quite as good as these ones that are in there. And I'm hoping, like fingers crossed, that this breaks my goose egg. And um, collections for me typically go in bunches. So I'll, I could go six, nine months without a collection and then buy three in the span of 10 days. So I'm I'm really hoping that this is the sign of things to come and that there's there will be more coming soon. So cross your fingers for me. I'll cross my fingers for you. Happy collecting and see you all next time.